Hello, last week we talked about Palm Sunday, and, and this is the week of Holy Week that we're, we're going to be talking about now. It's the week heading into Easter, and um, the Jesus and his disciples went into Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. It was a big feast day, and everyone would come, and Passover is a time to celebrate when God led Moses to bring the Israelites out of Egypt and into the promised land, to their land that they would been told they would have and they were given freedom there. So this was that the whole celebration of Passover is about. Well, um, as part of that and kind of the beginning of, of, of our story today, Jesus and his disciples met together for the Passover meal. And they met and they sat around a table and they shared their food, a special food that they were supposed to eat for Passover. And in the process, Jesus continued to teach them. And he tried to warn them and prepare them for what was coming because he knew he was going to die on the cross. But they weren't, didn't quite get it yet. Jesus even told them that night at that meal that one of them was going to betray him and would turn him over to the soldiers. And that all of them would desert him. And I imagine that was probably a very hard thing for them to hear. But after they had been at the dinner and they left, they went out to Gethsemane. And Gethsemane was a garden that they liked to, that Jesus would go to a lot of times to pray. It was beautiful there and it was quiet. And he and his disciples would go there and he would spend time in prayer. And on this particular occasion, he was very anxious. I think he just needed God to come down and kind of give him a little bit of security and give him a little bit of encouragement and to confirm with him that, yes, this is what I want you to do. This is what it's necessary to do. And, and so he needed that time in prayer. And as he prayed, and when he was finished praying, then the soldiers came. And the Bible says that the soldiers came and they took him and his disciples ran away in fear, which I don't blame them for doing, but they did. And they took Jesus into Jerusalem. And when they took him into Jerusalem, they first took him to the high priest at the temple. And the, the, the high priest at the temple didn't like Jesus. He was afraid of Jesus. Jesus was too popular and too many people were following him. And, and he just, he was afraid. And he, he had to do something, and he wanted to get rid of Jesus. And so they had people lie and say things about Jesus that weren't true. And they put him on trial, and they convicted him. And then they took him over because they didn't have the power to put him to death. They sent him to the Roman rulers. And, and once again, he was brought before them. And they talked to them, and even though they really didn't find enough evidence to, to, to sentence him to death, because the ruler was afraid not to, to, to stand up to the people, he ended up sentencing Jesus to die on the cross. Then the soldiers, they beat Jesus, and, and there were many things that happened. And finally, they, they, on Friday, the soldiers took Jesus to Golgotha, which was a hill outside of Jerusalem. And there, they nailed Jesus on a cross. And in the course of that day, Jesus died on the cross. And after he died, some of his followers came and they took him down and they took him and they buried him in a cave. Remember, we talked about that a couple of weeks ago, how that in this particular area of the world, they didn't really put people, bury them in the ground like we do. Instead, they were put into caves or, or they would dig out sections of rock to make a cave for, to be able to put the bodies in. So they took Jesus' body and they put perfume on it and which is like their custom of how they would do things. And they wrapped him in, in cloths and they put him in this cave. And then they rolled a stone in front of the cave. And because some of the Roman leaders were a little afraid that somebody might try to do something and say he came back to life on his own, well, they put soldiers there to guard the tomb. And they waited. His followers were very sad, and they were afraid, and they didn't know what was going to happen next. And they were just totally overwhelmed by what was going on. And then, on Sunday morning, Mary and some of the other ladies, they went to the tomb where Jesus was supposed to be. And when they got there, the stone had been rolled away. 
And when they looked inside, Jesus' body wasn't there anymore. It was gone. And instead, there was an angel there. And the angel said, what are you doing looking for Jesus here? He's not here. He's risen from the dead. Go back and tell the disciples and all the followers to go to, to do as he told them and go to Galilee and he will come and meet them there. And sure enough, even later that day, he started to appearing to, to different people, different ones of his followers. And he even met with all of his followers, or a good many of his main followers, and encouraged them and told them about what his plans were and what they needed to do. Isn't that a wonderful story? It starts off kind of sad, but then the ending is really good. But Jesus wants us to know that he loves us very much. He loved us so much that he was willing to go through all of this pain just for us. Just so that we could have eternal life with him. That we could live with him forever and be his follower. So this is the story of Easter. And at Easter time, we do bunny rabbits and Easter eggs, and we do all kinds of things. It's a time of celebrating springtime and everything coming back to life, which is kind of what Easter is about. It's about Jesus coming back to life and bringing life and hope to all of us if we only follow him. Thank you, and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.